Hello, my name is Pierre Harry, and I'm a product specialist with Aviva Select California. In this video, I will be going over Aviva Insights Advanced Analytics feature. This is not to be confused with Predictive Analytics, which was formerly known as PRISM, and is sometimes referred to as Advanced Analytics as well. So first, let me give a brief background on what Insight is. Insight is our cloud operations platform. It is a visualization and analysis tool that enables you to visualize and analyze operational data from anywhere, anytime, and on any device. You can access Aviva Insight through a web browser or a mobile application. Users can easily search for information in their connected SCADA databases and visualize it in different formats. For instance, they can create line graphs, tables, column charts, and more. Insight provides some analytics features that enables users to combine real-time data with data science analytics. The goal of these solutions is to help operators quickly identify issues and take action when needed, whether that action is to avoid downtime, reduce bad batches, improve energy efficiency, and so on and so forth. So Insight essentially has a four-tier system of analytics. As you progress up this half circle, the solutions require more human intervention and more guidance from the user. Also, as you progress up this half circle, the solutions become more accurate and more detailed. The more accurate your analytical model, the easier it is to pinpoint your issues and prescribe a solution, transforming your operations from reactive to proactive. At the bottom of this slide, we have automated analytics. Insight automatically applies this unsupervised machine learning model to your solution, which requires zero human intervention. The solution will automatically draw insights on your data and report on them. Next, we have condition-based rules. This tier requires some human intervention, with the user creating condition-based rules for their data to receive feedback when those conditions are met. The third tier is guided analytics. This is the supervised machine learning version of automated analytics. The user can control and customize some of the parameters of the machine learning algorithm to tailor their feedback. There is a whole separate video on this topic, which you can find in the description of this video below. And last but not least, we have advanced analytics at the top of the hierarchy, which is the main focus of this video. Advanced analytics, as indicated by the name, is a much more rich, detailed, and configurable version of guided analytics. While guided analytics allows the user to configure a few parameters and receive some limited feedback, which for many customers is sufficient, Advanced Analytics allows the user to control many parameters to build up much more rigorous models. Please note that automated analytics and condition-based rules are both features that come out of the box with standard insight solutions, while guided analytics and advanced analytics are add-ons that need to be purchased separately. So there are several ways that advanced analytics can be used to improve operations. Advanced analytics provides six groups of models. Predictive quality, predictive throughput, predictive energy efficiency, predictive uptime, predictive asset reliability, and predictive asset life. Each of these models is built out by the user differently and provides different feedback metrics, depending on what is appropriate for the particular user. So now let's discuss a couple of use cases of advanced analytics. The first one is a case study for a pet food manufacturer using the predictive quality model type of advanced analytics. Before advanced analytics, the manufacturing process took about one hour to complete per production line. Anytime they started a new formulation of a new product, there was a chance to scrap some material. Instead of performing quality analysis at the end of the production run, they wanted to shift to a real-time quality analysis model. They wanted an advanced warning of any quality issues so they can react in real time and avoid the scrap of materials. The advanced, model, uh, advanced analytics model is providing recommendations on how to start up the recipe and process parameters. During the middle of the run, when quality is not on target, advanced analytics provides real-time recommendations to adjust ingredients or process parameters to bring quality metrics back to target. The operator could use this information on how to start up and then while running, adjust the process in real time. No human can predict what 75 variables are going to do 30 minutes from now. So this is why we leverage advanced analytics to empower operators. Here's another case study, this time using the predictive energy efficiency model type. 
This customer is a large consumer product com uh, company that is committed to energy footprint reduction. They wanted to achieve a reduction across all production processes, which includes water, gas, electricity, steam, and essentially all the major utilities. The base level of this is to have a consistent set of me measures that can be scaled out and applied easily across different model types. Advanced analytics enabled them to establish a base level of energy metrics to understand what the energy drivers are and the potential for savings. The model then provided real-time recommendations to indicate when the process was run at a high energy state, which is unnecessary. So the machines were running when they were needed. And advanced analytics gave that feedback. It also provided recommendations around a procedure to start up or shut down differently to save energy. Using this feedback, the customer was able to have payback within 60 days of the start of the project. So now I will explain how the workflow of advanced analytics works. The solution that I have open here has advanced analytics enabled. To access the engine, you have to select the appropriate asset in the solution that will have the model associated with it. So here I'm navigating to my asset hierarchy and I'm going to select an asset to build out a model for. So for example, we're going to do AA card 026. And under asset actions on the top right here, I can select add advanced analytics model. That's also where I would be adding the guided analytics model. And if I select this model from the drop down here, that will launch the model creation engine. So the advanced analytics engine that you see here produces essentially a digital twin of the asset. So on the top of the page here, we can see the name of the twin as well as its place in the asset hierarchy. So I'm on AA Carb 026, which is part of the AA Carbonation parent uh, asset layer, which is part of the Wonderware System Consultant Sandbox parent layer. So this is how I can navigate between the different twins of each asset that I saw in the asset hierarchy earlier. So quick note about the layout. I won't spend too much time on this, but on the left side, you have your quick access toolbar here. If you favorite a twin by clicking on the star there, it will show up under your favorite section right there. You also have a launch pad, which gives you rapid access to the different areas of the advanced analytics engine system here. Below that, you have your monitor, which is essentially a dashboard that you can customize to observe some of the metrics and feedback that is calculated by the advanced analytics engine. All of this is customizable by clicking on edit on the top right. And let me just click on Launchpad to show you guys what that was. I mentioned it earlier, but this is kind of like a quick access uh, to access the different you know, areas of your system and of your engine here. And below monitors, you also have your alerts. And these are configurable just like they are in the base insight solution. Right, so it works just like the second tier condition-based alerts that we mentioned earlier um, on the hierarchy of uh, analytics options of insight. Then below that, you have your list of twins. This is where you can search your different twins as they're organized alphabetically. And you have full list of analyses that are performed by the model. So we'll, we'll come back to this later here. And on the right side, you have a quick navigation option, which is right there. You know. Advanced analytics, the engine is very detailed and some users can get lost in the interface initially. I know there's a lot of options here, so it can be easy to get lost and not know where you are. So the quick navigation tool right here is, is helpful to navigate back to you know, a particular twin or a different model uh, that you were working on previously. Below that, you have your background tasks. This is really helpful because you know when you launch a model creation wizard or you launch a process, uh, really, any other process that is underway in the engine will be listed here, as well as its estimated completed day, completed time. Excuse me. And below that, you have some additional options. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but uh, let me go back to my home page here to show you the full list of options. There you go. So below that, you can see that you can also see your twin overview, twin analysis, and there's an ability to comment and add attachments uh, as well as access help files. So these are different options that you can access that are dependent on the particular twin that you have open. So in my case, I have AA carb 007 because that represents the twin that is a you know digital representation of the AA carb 007 machine, right? So I could spend all day talking about the intricacies of this engine, but I do want to mention the workflow of how it works. So as you can see on the bottom of the twin page here, you have five boxes here. 
These five boxes are essentially the you know, pre-flight check wizards that one must complete in order to prepare the configuration of their model. So the first one is generally done automatically connecting the sensors. But because I created a model from an asset, the model will automatically infer the, the source of data here. So this one will already be green to show that the tags that are the, the, the data sources for this engine are already connected, right? So if I add an advanced analytics model from a specific asset that has the tags uh, allocated to it, then the model should automatically connect these tags here and use them as the data source. Then you have the op, uh, segment by product wizard, excuse me. And this allows you to segment the data by different products that your machine produces if you need that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, it's already completed, but I'm gonna show you guys how the wizard works really. You know, it gives you a description on what the wizard actually is and what it does. And it asks you, you know, some yes or no questions. So we're gonna, we answered yes here. Does this twin produce multiple products? And then it prompted me for the property that indicates a product change. And as you can see, these are the other steps of the wizard. They're really easy to follow, you know, step by step wizards that complete the model, or at least the that this portion, this property of the model from start to finish makes it really easy for the user to do this. Then next we have the states, the operational states wizard, which allows you to filter out the data from abnormal operating conditions. Again, I'm not going to go through considering them. They're already configured, um, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of how they work. Then you have the production rate wizard. So essentially this mathematically creates a single value that represents the production rate to increase the accuracy of the predictive models. So you can use that if optional. All these are optional, right? Except for the data source one. And then last but not least, we have the create a machine learning model for this twin. So that's the last step, right? You're going to go through these in order. Some of these are optional, some are not, right? And you just answer the yes or no questions and fill in the information that is prompted by the wizard. And then once we complete this final step here and create the model, and this is where you can configure, you know, the name and description for the model, it will populate the model right here. So as I said, in my case, I already completed these wizards, right? So this model that's completed is on the models list right here. So I can go ahead and click on this model, and this will bring up the model page of the model that, that is associated with this digital twin. And you can see that information in the overview section right here, where it shows the digital twin that it's associated with, right? And so I can go back and forth between them. And here you'll see that there's a fresh set of wizards. So I'm not gonna go ahead and complete these yet. Uh, it's gonna take a while, but I'm just gonna go over them and show you guys you know, how they work. And it's essentially just you know, answering yes or no questions and, and filling in the blanks of what the wizard prompts you, right? So they're pretty easy to fill out. So the first wizard here is adding the data that the model should consider, right? Then you have a sort of pre-flight check. This is essentially, uh, oh, sorry, I missed one. This is where you uh, configure the data that the model should consider. And this is the time range one, right? So you instruct the wizard on the training window for this particular model. And then once you've done that, you've told you know, the engine what data to consider and the training window for it, you're going to validate the model's configuration and the advanced analytics model or engine at this point will basically analyze your inputs, right, for all these wizards and give you recommendations if it thinks that something, a parameter, a particular parameter is not configured correctly. And once you follow these recommendations and, you know, you ensured that the engine's happy and that it checked that everything that was configured makes sense, you can go ahead and train the model in this next step right here. And if you click on start training, It'll train the model and it will show up in the background tasks as training, which may take um, a few hours, depending on the complexity of your model. And then once that's done, you'll be able to see the results. And so let me go to a, um, I'm going to go to a twin and a model that's already configured so I can show you guys these results here. So I think a, a carb 020, no, not this one. Let me search for one here. No, not this one either. There's one that I'm looking for that should have, there you go. So AA carb 001, I clicked on the model of the digital twin. This already has the model trained. So you can see that these are all green showing completed and then I can review the results of this particular model. And beyond that, you can also use this additional wizard right here, which is optional to decide when the trained model should run, right? If you 
decide that there is, you know, a particular time that makes sense for the model to be running while there's other times where it shouldn't be running, you know, like, for example, if the machine is on and off, right? It doesn't make sense for the model to be running when the machine is off. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at these results. And this will take you to the training results summary page where the engine will tell you what it did to clean your data and give you information on how it generates the statistical model and the predictive model, right? So this is basically just information. It tells you what it did, the background processes, the data science that the engine performed in order to cleanse your data and create these uh, results, right? And so once we click on next and go to the conclusion, we can go ahead and click on view all analysis to see the results. And so here's the bread and butter of the results of advanced analytics. So as you can see, the engine generates different kinds of analyses here to give you valuable insight into your data. Uh, so you have different categories on top that it organizes the results with, the analyses, right? So evaluate model, understand relationships, review recommendations, and anomalies. And for each of these categories, it will organize the analyses, right? The piece, the analysis that it performed, right? So anomaly breakdown, anomaly history, anomaly status, so on and so forth. These are all the analyses that the model produced based on your training, your trained model and the results that it's producing to give you recommendations, right? So I can click on anomaly breakdown, for example, and in this particular case, there's no anomalies found, but I'm gonna go ahead and click a different one that has a result here. So uh, remember, this is the predict energy model type, right? So there were six model types, and this is predict energy. This is the model cor uh, correlation analysis one, right? So you can see that it plots the results here, and um, this is really useful, right? You can click on them to get more information on the value of each uh, of the graphs here. And then you can also uh, email the results if you needed to as well. So someone that is a user inside of this uh, solution can view these analyses, right? But they can also email them to their coworkers if needed. And, um, oh yeah, one more thing to mention. So if you remember on the quick access toolbar on the left, you have your analyses button right here, which lists the full list of analyses that are produced by this particular model, right? And sorts it by alphabetical order. And if you remember, so this is how you can quickly access a particular type of analyses, right? Depending on what you're looking for. And if you remember the monitor dashboard that I mentioned earlier over here, we can click on this to see the default dashboard that advanced analytics automatically generates for you. But like I mentioned before, you can make custom monitor dashboards as well with the different analyses charts that are generated by your model's results. And this is where you would do it. You can click on edit and then it unlocks a list of actions here. You can add some tiles, right? So add a piece of analysis to this monitor dashboard, create a new monitor dashboard, delete, manage it, so on and so forth. So essentially you can create customized results, right, and grab the data science analyses that we saw earlier that the model creates from the model uh, that from the model that you, you generated earlier with the wizards, right? These are the analyses that are produced as the results of the engine performing the analysis on the model that you created. You can go ahead and select the ones that you want to see and use and organize them on a single dashboard that this engine calls monitors. So anyway, I could spend all day discussing the intricacies of this engine, but for the purposes of keeping this video fairly introductory, I'm going to wrap it up here. I recently taught a workshop on the advanced analytics engine that you guys can check out on our YouTube channel to go more into depth into this topic. Uh, and I will also produce a link that will be in the description of the video below if you guys want to follow that and watch the full workshop recording as well to go more in depth. And of course, if you guys have any questions or you need a more in-depth demo of this uh, of this feature, you can reach out to us at Aviva Select California at any time. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.